Hi there. I would like to share some Casadi slides with you that I presented at this year's Benelux meeting in my capacity as postdoc in the MECO team of Leuven. In these slides, uh, I will give a walkthrough of Casadi work towards nonlinear MPC control. And I will also highlight some features that are new in Casadi 3.5, the new release. What is Casadi? It's an open source framework for, for algorithmic differentiation and nonlinear programming. You can find much more about it at casadi.org. The first ingredient we need are computational graphs. In Casadi, you always work with symbols. You create them with mx.sim. So in, in our concrete case, we will create an expression for uh, ODE with two states and one control input. So we create symbols for the states and for the controls. And then on this line, we compose these uh, symbolic primitives into an expression, symbolic expression. We can print this expression, uh, but often it's not really human uh, friendly to read, but the machine understands it. So what we did was create a symbolic expression of shape two by one. Now to do something with this expression, we have to create a function. Uh, so we create a Casadi function called f, and our inputs are the states and the controls, and the output is the ODE expression. Once we have this function, we can evaluate it numerically at some uh, numeric values. So if I change these numeric values, you will just see a slightly different result. Nothing special. Uh, here in this function representation, uh, you're shown what the inputs are, what the outputs are. It's not really helpful that input 0 and input 1 are named like this, but that's the default. Uh, as If we want, we can add uh, simplifying labels, and that makes the printout easier to read. So now we can see that f is a mapping from x and u to the expression that we called ODE. Another ingredient we can use uh, towards MPC is a time integration method. Now, this is a chunk of code, but uh, let's first focus on this one. We say what the structure of the ODE is. Well, in general, Casadi handles DAE, so we'll just call the struct DAE. We first specify what are the states in our problem, because before we called x states, but we never formalized this, that these were states. So. Uh, in the context of a DAE, x means states, and we equate them to the symbolic expressions that we had on the last slide. Um, the p entry denotes all parameters, so things that are fixed during the integration horizon. And then lastly, the ODE uh, element of this struct should contain the expression uh, that we constructed before. So this could be ODE or we can also type it like this. It amounts to the same thing. Now, this structure is passed to the constructor of the integrator uh, function. So this is just a label, and here is a specific integration method, so Rungo Kuta. Then we have the problem definition, and then we can have some options if we want. So in this case, I prepared the options uh, to say that we integrate over uh, half a second. Uh, and we do a couple of intermediate uh, steps on the integration horizon. Uh, what you see is, again, a function object. Uh, just like last slide, f, the result of the integrator call is also a function object. Uh, and you can see the label, so x0 is uh, initial value, xf is the value of the state after the integration task was performed. So that's quite a lot uh, of stuff here that is redundant in our case. So this integrator object, that is really just a Casadi function object, we can call with the familiar syntax of passing these numbers. And then we have some empty arguments since they're not actually used. But it's a bit hard to follow what exactly means what. So we can have an alternative syntax where we use the keywords um, that you can find in the printout of integrator. So the only things we need are x0 and p in this case. The outputs of doing this uh, keyword call is a structure again. 
And if you just want to access uh, the final state, we can do res xf and you get the same result, but in a more repeatable way. Uh, we can also call this integrator function symbolically, so it doesn't have to be a uh, number. So x and u are again symbolic here. And then what is x next? Uh, well, as I said, it's not really readable, but it's it's a computational graph where the call to the integrator function is, is present, basically. Uh, with this symbolic uh, call technique, we can simplify the API of our function. So let's create a capital function f that just maps from initial state control to the final state. Um, yeah, this from syntax should be familiar by now. So on last slide, we ended up with the Cassati function big F, which is a mapping from a two vector and a scalar to a two vector. Now, this just represents an integration step of half a second. So what if we want to simulate a whole trajectory? And then we need some kind of cascade to call F, uh, big F recursively. And this is what uh, Mapacum does. So in our case, uh, n is 20, and with Mapacum we end up with another function built on top of f that takes as control vector uh, a 1 by 20 uh, vector. And as a result, as output, we get the states over this trajectory. We can use this to make uh, some nice plots. So let's just start from uh, 0, 1 and apply uh, some a cosine signal. Um, if we would create a sign signal, you would have a slightly different trajectory here. So what we're going to do to get derivatives is first create a symbolic representation of the control vector, the 1 by n uh, matrix, and we'll call uh, the symbol capital U. Then we will call the simulator function with our numeric x0 and our symbolic uh, control vector. So the result will be a 2 by n uh, matrix, but we're only say we're only interested in the first state. So the result of it we slice. Uh, so then we get the expression for the state trajectory. Then we can use a standard uh, Cassati command, which is Jacobian. So we take the Jacobian of this simulated uh, uh, state with respect to the control inputs. And we we'll call this expression uh, J. So let's see what this does. Uh, so naturally, J is a 20 by 20 matrix. And you see this particular uh, sparsity structure where you have a cascade. So on the columns are the controls. And on the rows are the, uh, is the evolution of the state. So here we have the, the state after one integration step, after two, after three, and so on. And naturally, uh, where we are at time five, doesn't depend on the control input later than uh, time five. So naturally, you get this trigonal uh, structure. Cassati recognizes this automatically. Now, at this point, j is still uh, an expression. Um, to get actual numbers out, we have to go through a function. So let's create a function, jf. Uh, oh, let's change the label here. Uh, the labels are just for printout, they're not very important. So a function mapping from our symbolic control signal to our uh, Jacobian expression that we just computed. Um, so the result of this function uh, is printed out here. So the input is 1 by 20 and the output is 20 by 20 with a couple of non-zeros. Uh, to get the actual numbers, uh, we do uh, we apply it. Huh? We linearize on a zero control, for example, and you can get these uh, MATLAB numbers out, or you can make a nice plot uh, where you also see the trigonal structure. But here the coloring is chosen to scale with the values. So these are kinds of analysis you can easily do uh, with Cassati. Now on to optimal control. So here I show you an optimal control problem uh, that I've prepared with the system F. 
So we're just going to penalize the quadratic uh, cost with the states and quadratic and the controls. Now we do a multiple shooting discretization. Multiple shooting means that uh, the whole state trajectory and control trajectory are decision variables. So this translates uh, in these instructions. So we'll use this abstract uh, class in Kasadi to solve uh, nonlinear problem problems, um, which is called Opti. So we create this optimization environment and then create variables of the correct size. So we needed variables for all uh, states, so 2 by n plus 1. And for the control vector, it's a variable uh, 1 by n. So this is an abstraction layer. So under the hood, there is just mx symbols and nothing special going on. But this is an yeah, abstraction or convenience layer. Uh, we're also going to do MPC. Um, so in the end, we're going to have uh, like a measurement of the state. So we have to uh, we have to have that the first state is equal to some measurement. And for this measurement, we'll choose a parameter, so something that is not optimized over. Then we can create the objective, so it's the opti.minimize, and then sum of squares of x, sum of squares of u. Then we have these dynamic constraints of the multiple shooting. So let's do them in a loop. You can also do it with functional programming, but the loop uh, reads a bit easier. So in the loop, we add constraints with subject to. So the state at k plus 1, so the whole state, uh, we have two components of state, is equal to what our uh, one-step integration function uh, predicts. So the big F we created earlier. And we have to supply this with the current state, xk, and a current control. Um, then we can add further constraints, like uh, say the the control action is limited between minus 1 and 1. You can use this double-sided uh, notation. And then last but not least, um, this constraint where we fix the first state. Um, where do we go from here? We select a solver method. So in many examples, we use IPOPT because it's quite robust. Here I'm going to do MPC, so I'm going to use an SQP method. And as solver, I'm going to use QRQP. Um, QRQP is still a bit experimental, so if you want to try this out yourself, uh, maybe OSQP is a bit more appropriate for you. Uh, anyway, before we can solve, we have to set a concrete value for this parameter. So let's say uh, 0, 1 as parameter, and then we do a solve command. So what, what you see in this output are, these are the main iterations of the SQP method. And then these things in between are the inner iterations of the QRQP QP solver. Um, so what can we do with this? Uh, after we solve, so let's go back. So the, the result of calling solve is a solution object. And we can ask the solution object, what is the current value or what is the optimal value of your x and of the u? And with this, we can make like uh, a simple plot here. So in uh, this line is the control vector. And the states are regulated to 0 because the objective uh, favors to be at uh, the origin for the states. Um, you can also obtain expressions for all constraints together and all um, variables together. And with these, you can uh, look at Jacobian. So for example, if I take the constraint Jacobian, so the Jacobian of all constraints, so this, is, this represents all constraints, with respect to all variables, you get this uh, banded structure. Now, uh, there are some off-diagonal terms here because the the, we first declare the states and then the controls. So our dependence is a bit skewed. If we would alternatively declare states and controls, we would get a truly uh, banded structure. Um, other than Jacobian, you can also ask for the Hessian, huh? no problem. Hessian is just uh, identity in this case. 
Uh, and for the next slide, I'm going to add some uh, options to be silent because the output was a bit uh, verbose. So let's now work towards an NPC using this optimal control problem that we solved with multiple shooting. For this, we'll use a recently added feature in 3.5, uh, which is the conversion of uh, this abstract modeling environment opti to a simple Casadi function. So we'll use this uh, syntax. We'll say to the optimization environment, please create a function, give it a name, and it needs to be a mapping from our parameters, so the initial state, to uh, the optimal control signal to apply the next interval. So just U1, basically. We can optionally, again, give it some labels to make it clearer when you read the printout uh, what these things mean. So it's a mapping from initial state or observe state to optimal control action. Now remember that M contains an SQP method embedded. The SQP method uh, contains a link to a QP solver. Um, and there is also an integration uh, method embedded. It's all in one big computational graph, which is uh, differentiable. Now let's just build a simple MPC around this uh, Kasadi function M object, which represents the optimal action to apply. So each iteration of the MPC, uh, we will compute the optimal control action U and use it to apply uh, this to the system. And we'll add some noise uh, just to represent model plan mismatch. Let's see what this does. So we have each time step uh, going on uh, here. And you see that the SQ number of SQP steps are reasonably small. Let's plot the results of this MPC simulation. So what we see is that the system never quite reaches zero because of the noise, but the MPC tries its best uh, to do this. Now, the second feature I like to highlight uh, from the new 3.5 release of Casadi is loading and saving of function objects. So this function object M, uh, which contains SQP methods and uh, integration methods, we can uh, save this to the disk and load it back at any, any other time. We can load it back uh, from, uh, from MATLAB, from Python, from C++. We can even use it from C if you want. Um, so let's set the preci precision high enough and see that the result of uh, our computation is the same before and after loading and saving this. Yeah, we get the same results. You'll have to trust me on this. <laughs> so that's a quite nice feature to make the modeling more flexible. You can model in MATLAB uh, and do the MPC in Python or vice versa. A third feature uh, which is now possible in 3.5 is doing cogeneration with the SQP solver in there. So we can just ask M generate code. Uh, let's have a max interface, compile the max, and then uh, also call it from MATLAB. So now the code is being generated and compiled. Here we go, the same result. So this wraps up uh, my little presentation for the Benelux. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it.